Hi there, this is your friend Suna Semnan again, and I want to respond to a wonderful um, interview that was between Lisa Gunshore and Magenta Pixie. They brought up many, many topics. Um, they are just, and so many other things came up, even for me at the same time. And one of the things was the, the mask and the anti-mask and the conflicts that are going on, um, the pro-Trump, the uh, no-Trump. Um, so the thing that I want to bring up that I remember is a book from maybe 10 years ago by Anita Mojani. It's a Hay House publication. Wayne Dwyer found her. This woman had been... Um, diagnosed with cancer. She had a like really end-stage cancer. Uh, she had been an exemplar woman, daughter, wife, her whole life. And in the last hour, when she actually heard in another room, her spirit must have moved to another room already, the doctor telling her husband that, okay, this is it. This is the last hour. She either makes it through or she's gone. All her organs were shutting down. She went into a near-death experience and uh, saw that she had not lived her life. She had lived everybody what by everybody else's expectations. And when she had that aha moment, she knew she was going to come back, live her life, and it didn't matter what she did for the cancer, it was going to go away. She could take treatment, she could not do treatment. And she said that she, um, you know, her doctors fought her to uh, take treatment because she had, um, they couldn't believe that the cancer would just go away. And, and she did, and or I, I don't know exactly everything that she did, but the point I was gonna say, and, and the cancer had disappeared. Um, but what I was gonna say is, it doesn't really matter what we do when we have the awareness of ourselves, when we have the awareness of our light, because the light and connecting to that Christ itself within, it's what guides us. And we don't even need to plan. We don't need many of the things that we thought we did. And we, just like Anita Majarni, making this aha experience through her near-death experience, this aha awareness, we can make this kind of aha awareness, and it might come in many, many different ways. You know, some people do get cancer, or have an accident, or um, lose a child, or, you know, and some people simply connect with nature and have an aha experience there. So you, if you want to really connect in to the truth of yourself, to your own light, have your aha experience, you can choose how you want to have that happen. And it can be easy or it can be difficult. So I want to tell you that my thing is really building healthy habits because I believe that Upon healthy habits, you bring health, right? If you, you know, eat balanced meals and uh, drink water, you, you'll have your health. You get out in fresh air. You, these healthy habits. Now, healthy habits are not just for your physical being. They're also for your emotional being, your mental being, and your spiritual or ethereal being. So the, um, and social. I'll count all those together. Social, spiritual, ethereal. That's one group there. Just for the sake of language and linear way of thinking. So in your physical um, balanced healthy habits, um, it is about taking care of your body, right? Keeping it hydrated, nutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, uh, getting the sunlight, getting the fresh air. Mentally, healthy habits are about calming those mental seas, 
that choppy storms that we get so that we have a, a calm place to be at. Fear fasting is important. I have many videos on these healthy habits and one is called fear fasting. Some of them are on the YouTube and most of them are on patreon.com. Um, I also do videos that are public on YouTube that go into um, Patreon with more explanation. But healthy habits are, are important. So me mentally calming and then also emotionally allowing for the full range of your emotions. That's so important. And that's one of the, one of the issues that is deep in my heart is male liberation not just women's liberation, but men's liberation, we have allowed them only two emotions, anger or pride. And to have the full range of emotions is to be fully human and to be fully free. So have those full range of, of, of emotions and embrace them in the diamond light flame of your heart. The diamond light flame of your heart is the divine breath, the divine source. Again, I have heart yoga videos and meditation videos that will help you with those healthy habits. And then on a spiritual, social, ethereal level, that's kind of beyond words in a sense. But um, when you do these healthy habits in the other three areas, you'll find your growth happening there and um, an awareness that is almost beyond explanation, uh, kind of like trying to write down or, or tell someone a dream. It's just, it's not linear. It's in so many dimensions that you can tell aspects of it, but it's hard to, to put into words the fullness of it. So um, I am also gonna show you now, if I can reach it, um, a children's book that is about starting healthy habits early. I had a program for um, preschoolers for about 16 years, which I focused on building healthy habits early. And this children's book, oh, you see, it's called The Dragon Adventure, and it is, uh, okay, wow just made it. Um, it is a story of courage and compassion and it has a, um, 10 Qigong movements that everybody should use every day in order to move, um, in order to balance yourself. And, um, and then it, it stimulates curiosity and it, so it's works on all levels. I don't want to make this a commercial. I actually really want to um, address some of the things that was stimulated in me from this wonderful interview. And I am going to place this interview um, below here so you can access it yourself. Um, it's worth listening to, even if you put it on as you're doing your chores and getting ready in the morning and stuff like that. So um, just to introduce myself, I am a Libra. I was, I'm a Libra child, which is the balance. So I'm always balancing. And we tend to uh, take the opposite side of an argument, the, the weaker side, in order to bring balance. And so that's why, you know, you might see me one day saying, you know, I believe in the medical system. And the other day, I don't believe in the medical system. You know, things... Um, it's a it's a balance and what I it, it's not about being contra contradictory or uh, wishy-washy it's really about seeing and experiencing the oneness and the wholeness um, something a mantra that came to me recently and it's very strong is we are of one source pure love Repeat that with me and see how that f sounds, how that feels, how that resonates in your body. Repeat it now. We are 
of one source, pure love. Now, I think it might need to repeat it many times in many different situations. It's a good thing to try when you're being challenged, when you're being upset, to see how that changes your perspective. Um, and that's kind of where I come from. My focus is building the healthy habits so that we raise our bottom line. And I was stimulated to do this early childhood development program when I was working as a psychotherapist, a um, licensed social worker in New York City with, in an AIDS clinic back in the 90s and uh, early 90s actually and um, I saw many people having very difficult life situations at that point. I mean living with AIDS whether you're a father in a family or uh, a, a young man in a single young man or a, a mother, a, a young mother, they had so many situations many, um, many different diagnoses that came into that. I had a woman who was multiple personality, had multiple personality disorder. So one personality knew that she was infected and the other personality who happened to be a prostitute had no idea that she was infected. So working with some very, very difficult situations, I realized that wow, I'm on the wrong end of the scale here. By the time people have created these um, unhealthy situations, you know, little small things, small little habits, or small little how you choices in life, perhaps, you'd say, um, they came to a point where the door was, the doors, a lot of doors were closed. You know, you, when you have a terminal illness, um, you have a lot of doors closed and, and I'm saying this a little bit with hesitation right now because let's look at Anita Majarni with end stage cancer where all her organs are shutting down and she has an aha experience in this near death experience and her life changes and she's now living her life in the fullness and the glory of it. So even these people that had a terminal illness, um, difficult diagnosis, they had the opportunity for their, their aha moments. And, uh, and we always do. We always have an opportunity to expand love um, if we choose to take that perspective. But I felt, ah, Instead of growing through pain and suffering, I would like to grow through joy and beauty and nature's lessons. Um, so I, I thought, and that's what I would want for the younger generation. That's what I would want for our children. So uh, that's why I created this program that uh, early on helped them find a way of coping with challenges on the physical, emotional, mental, and social levels that um, would quickly rebalance them into um, a state of joy and happiness and bliss, harmony. And um, I continue to do that in the Freedom Center that I've built now. And I'll go into that a little bit later, but I wanted to continue on this path because, um, you know, we talk about in these more enlightened spiritual communities about um, being indigo children and crystal children and star seeds and, and all that stuff. And these are just names. We are of one source, pure love at the core. But we are unique also and we choose these unique paths and these unique experiences, our, our unique bodies, our unique 
um, personalities and ways of, of um, being or doing things, going on our journeys. And um, I, th I feel that I've always felt very um, protective and connective to young children. Um, there's an innocence in, in young children, this really just sense of wonder and beautiful sense of self that um, I try to keep with me. So when my kids asked me how old I was, for the longest time, I told them I was eight years old. When they turned seven, my daughter in particular is pretty smart. She said, Mom, you can't be eight. And then I had to tell her, okay, you're right, I'm 16. <laughs> anyway, so um, there's a part of me that, uh, and I think a part of all of us that still connects with that child self. Um, we may have like really pushed that piece back into the closet, but sit down with a four-year-old or a five-year-old and you'll see that come back out. It's wonderful. I, I feel like I came into this earth change uh, scenery stage uh, early on to kind of protect that childlike state, to keep that from being completely squashed by your education system and the other systems that are going on. Um, and I still, that's why I do my healthy habit stuff, I'm still trying to uh, protect that beautiful, innocent child within. Um, even We even speak to that in the heart yoga. So if you haven't tried one, I suggest you try one heart yoga session. Um, and, uh, and I have them on, I have them in YouTubes and on my Patreon. They're, I have a short one that's about 20 minutes and I have uh, most of them around an hour. That, that um, you could, if you want to give a name to the beingness that I am, it could be like an early indigo um, coming to protect the indigos and the crystal children or a crystal or um, I did have the experience of when I was a teen, maybe like an older teen, of um, be given the opportunity to be a trans channel and I, I didn't want that. I just thought, let me just access the wisdom that I need to access in a normal daily life as a mother, as a friend, as a colleague, a co-worker, co as you know, however people wanted to see me, it um, uh, doesn't really matter. Names don't matter. So, um, and I do offer lots of things depending on what, you know, I, I offer a lot. So if you're interested, just Google me and look at my website and stuff. Um, but I wanted to um, say that even at the age of like 10, I knew there was going to be a big flip one day. That's what I called it, the big flip. A lot of people are calling it the shift, the event, the awakening, whatever it is. But I called it the big flip. And the big flip was going to go from this dog-eat-dog -dog world where everybody felt like, I got to go get it first because there's not enough of it. And I got to push you down before you push me down, whatever that is, dog-eat-dog -dog world. It was going to flip to wow, I get everything I need and I want and I just love offering what I have to give to you. And so there's not even a, an accounting of, uh, definitely not uh, money exchange, but of bartering or anything like that. It's, it's kind of like a family, you know? A family, we do things for each other, you know? You ask your son, you know, could you please take out the garbage because I'm trying to figure out, you know, fi finish making dinner for everybody. or, And you just do things for, for each other. And I think that's something I'm finding now, too, in this time, this magical time, um, which we're calling a pandemic. And a pandemic basically means a worldwide event, right? So this is a worldwide event, a pandemic. Um, and is that we are 
getting closer to our families and being much more um, oh, at ease or with joy or, or flowing uh, with, the, with the family. And uh, that spills over to the way we, we care for one another and, and, and do the other systems. I think the family, where, which is such a love-based system, um, and I understand there are a lot of dysfunctional families too. I don't believe there are any bad people. I just believe there are some dysfunctional dy- relationship dynamics. And, and that brings me to my other book, Peace, the blue one there with the turtle. Turtle Island is what Native Americans call them, um, the United States, but I, I didn't know that at the time. It's come to me later. Grandmother Spirit. Uh, so for those of you that connect into that more shamanic um, language and stuff, it's there. It's called Peace, Discovering Life's Harmony Through Relationships. And that is really looking at your life that you're experiencing and that you've built through observing your relationships, including your relationship to yourself. And it's a book that's half written you write part of it too i'm bringing up questions and stimulating hopefully to bring forth your uh, inner wisdom and it's your book it's what you write authoring your life um, through the facilitation of the book and um, so this the way we relate to one another is what brings about our, our experience, our situations. Um, and it's not just relating to one another, it's what we relate to things and situations. It's how we relate. And that's why I wanna bring up now in this time of great divisions, I mean, there are the people that are, uh, accused of being racist because they're not speaking up enough and then there's the people that are are accusing because they're speaking up a lot and then there's the people who hate Trump, the people who love Trump, there's the people who are uh, pro-masks and vaccines and the ones that are against masks and masks. I mean it's like we always do the best that we can with the knowledge that we have now. So a wonderful way to grow is to continue to keep open to new knowledge. And the knowledge to keep open to is what you feel from your heart. And when you feel fear, breathe through that fear and ask that fear, is this, is this because I'm in imminent danger at the moment? And I need to really, you know, fight or flight or run or, you know, or is this that I've got something, I'm caught up somewhere in, in, an, in another, it, it, it's not a reality in, a, in an imaginary world. Because if I'm not in an immediate danger situation, then that fear it's in my head, it's a fantasy. And it's taking up space. It's taking up space where I could have joy and appreciation and beauty. So you can thank that fear, because if you fight that fear, you're just going to give it more energy. But you can thank that fear for reminding you to focus on that that gives you joy or beauty or bliss or, you know, that which is um, light and love. And it's when we forget to focus on those things that the, the darkness moves in. So I wanted to respond a lot more to these, um, what was stimulated in me from this 
this video and I think I responded to somewhat of an amount of that. Um, it's funny because as you listen, well, for me, I'll say, as I listen, it's almost like, yeah, I wanted to get into the conversation and talk with them, but I also wanted to listen to them. So I was very glad that I couldn't get into the conversation and talk with them. And that's why I'm sharing that here now. Um, I am so delighted with all the wonderful beings, all the wonderful people all around and who are sharing these messages. There are so much, there's so much information and, um, and it's okay to get information that is disturbing. It's like, you know, you can't heal a wound until you look at it. If you go to the doctor and you say, you know, I have a pain in my uh, back, but I won't let you look at it, you're not going to get any healing. You're not going to get any help. So um, we need to allow ourselves to see it, turn the light on it, make it, the light is the opportunity, the love, the, the hope for balance again. And, and then go through what we need to go through in order to create that harmony and that balance once again. And so now I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the Freedom Center. And this was a vision that I had in 2006. I didn't even know what I was going to call it. But the vision was basically a place where you found the courage to meet yourself and let your soul grow and, um, and, and feel that bliss and that harmony and definitely connecting with nature. And, um, and then I was going to make it available many books of different types of philosophies and religions and ways of thinking and um, a, a, a meditative yoga room. This is what I'm in right now is our yoga room. Um, places where you could stay over. So you could be there for a weekend or a week or a month, you know, or six months, whatever you needed. And I have that. I have an organic vegetable garden. Um, I have the woods right behind us and the river called the light. In Swedish, it's called Ljusnan, which means the light. And this community that I'm in is called the, the Light Valley, Ljusdal. So, and, um, and many channels and mediums and stuff has talked about the light coming in through the north. And we are fairly well north. We're not in the um, you know, Arctic Circle, but we're... Um, not so far away. It's probably about six, seven hour drive, if that, four hour drive maybe, um, up into the Arctic Circle. But it's so it's it, it it's a um, definitely Nordic uh, environment with um, nature, animals, blueberries everywhere, and lingonberries, which is like a very small cranberry, but it's pretty unique to the north other berries that are unique to the north as, as well, um, birch trees and unique mushrooms and, and uh, healing things that are unique to the north. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just a place that is. I like making spaces for people to be able to grow, expand, explore, be creative. Um, and we have that too. We have uh, artists here and um, it's just a, a place that is. I mean, we have very high uh, spirits here as well. Um, and you really have the freedom to connect with what serves you the best. Um, and whenever you can come here and like to come here, just give us a call or send an email or we're on 
Facebook. You can message us there as well. Wow. Um, I hope, my hope is that somehow this talk or whatever you call it, uh, it's a one-way conversation since it's a YouTube, um, has stimulated your own inner light and um, hopefulness for the world you want. And I'll end on this thought. One of the reasons I stopped, oops, so my leg fell asleep. One of the reasons I got myself out of the medical mental health profession as a clinical social worker and psychotherapist, giving diagnoses and treating people according to diagnoses and recording and all that, um, was that I, I, I just paused and I thought about what's the world that I want and what's in that world? And I thought, well, there won't be people with these major traumas in that world. That's, um, and they won't need psychotherapists. Um, but one thing is that to grow, we always go through these like transitions. And some of these transitions are pretty big and hard to get through on your own. You need support. So I'll help that. I'll be a life transition facilitator. And since then I've learned quantum um, technologies. So I call myself a quantum light trans transformation coach, I call it. And um, so I thought of a lot of other things of what I wanted in my world, how I wanted my world to be that started me making different types of small choices. So I encourage you to give yourself time to just create a blank slate, almost like in the Bible it says, and God hovered over the void. Hover over the void and just allow yourself, coming from your heart, to see the images of the world that gives you joy, everything that gives you joy. It can be anything. You could have a, a, a unicorn farm, anything. You know, don't limit yourself by what you're told is not allowed to be. Just don't limit yourself at all. And allow that to come out. Allow your, your dream, ideal world be God over the void and create what you want to create in your imagination. Make that picture for yourself. If you want, you can draw that picture for yourself or you can write it or you can make a song that's that picture of yourself, whatever you want. Keep that picture in mind and every time you have any kind of choice, whether you're going to go to the store now or the post office. Think, how does this choice, which of those choices is going to bring me to that picture, to that joy, the quickest? Or which one is in the direction of that? Sometimes they both are, so it doesn't matter. You can go to the store or the post office. It doesn't matter. They're both in that direction. But if you do that, you're going to start to see that your dream and your vision is going to start manifesting itself. As impossible as it may feel in the moment, my little saying, if I have a mantra, it's what you feed grows. So if you have that vision and you're always asking yourself, okay, in this moment, what will bring myself there? And 
and if you um, and to make it simple you can just ask what brings me the most joy at this moment because actually your vision is about your joy um, regardless of what the materials are right so you can ask yourself okay what feels more joyful now and you can feel within you can ask yourself I'm going to the grocery store now hmm. how did that feel when I said that I'm going to the post office now hmm how that feel when I saw when I said that and the one that gives you the most joy go with that it doesn't matter if it's practical or not go with that and I could feel that within myself so I know where I would have gone and one felt good and neutral and the other one felt just a little bit exciting and joyful a little bit more so um, I think that's enough for now I love you guys so much I hope you have the most amazing joyful day with surprise gifts of joys and blessings so go forth in this day with a consciousness and awareness as you were always making choices what's the next thing I'm going to do now and listen in to feel oh, which one gives me the greatest tickle of joy or peace or the feeling that I want all right here we go catch up with you another time perhaps in heart yoga or um, anything <laughs>